Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to spend some time um, solving very, very classical and very easy problems in the theory of probabilities. Classical in the terms of they basically correspond to classical definition of the probability as a measure, basically. Um, we were talking about certain distribution of probabilities among elementary events um, and then we were, chose, we were choosing an event um, which combined certain number of elementary events out of the total number of elementary events and basically the proportion of the measure allocated to these chosen elementary events um, to measure of the entire um, uh, set of elementary events constitutes the probability. It's like number of good events versus number of total events, something like this. So these are classical concepts of theory of probabilities and I would like to spend some time um, solving a few very very easy problems. Uh, these problems and this lecture presented on unizor.com, that's where I suggest you to watch this lecture and uh, the preferable way to approach any kind of a um, educational material dedicated to problems is uh, first try to solve these problems yourself check the answer against whatever the the nodes uh, contain to this lecture they are right there to the right of the um, video image on this website um, and then you can actually listen to whatever I'm saying in, in, in the lecture because your uh, approach to solving the problems can be different. Okay, so the problem number one um, is the following. In chess, um, the game is on 8 by 8 board. On every cell you can put some um, some piece and we're talking about rooks now if this is your uh, chessboard and this is one rook and this is another rook one is let's say white another is black now in this position they cannot capture each other but if they are in the same horizontal line or the same vertical line then depending on which turn it is, either this can uh, capture this one or this can capture this one. So, being on one horizontal or vertical line for the piece which is called a rook is important for being able to capture something, right? So, here is the condition of this problem. We have this word and we have two rooks. One is white, another is uh, black. And um, the, the problem is if I randomly put it on, on the board, two rooks, what's the probability of one being able to capture another? Or in other words, what's the probability of two rooks on the 8x8 board to stand in the same horizontal or vertical line? Now, I started with something which is very important. I, s I said that two rooks are randomly placed on the board. Now, what the word randomly means? Well, in this problem, and in probably many, many others, if the word randomly is specified without concrete definition of how randomly it's distributed, it implies actually the even distribution, which means if I have 8 by 8, 64 um, uh, cells, 64 squares on the board, it, and I randomly place one particular piece on the board, Basically, the probability of each is 1 64th. So, all probabilities are evenly distributed. Now, that's easy to say when you are in a, a discrete uh, distribution case. What if you are um, uh, facing the distribution uh, which is called continuous? Well, in this case, we are also um, implying that random means proportional to some natural measure uh, which is already defined. For instance, if I'm saying that a random variable takes um, 
random variable on in the segment from A to B. It means it's basically proportion. It, it, its distribute its distribution is proportional to the any kind of a subsegment from it. So the probability to be within this segment is proportional to its length. The probability to to be within the entire segment is one. So the probability to be in any other segment is basically proportional to the ratio of this length versus this length. If I'm talking about random distribution of a point inside a square, then basically it means that if I would take any kind of a um, figure inside the square um, which, which has boundaries, so the probability for the point to be inside this particular area is basically uh, a ratio between the area of this uh, figure divided by the area of a circle. So random means evenly. All right. So we have defined this thing. Now let's go back to our uh, problem. Now the classical definition of the probability, as I was saying before, it's basically a, a, a ratio in case of discrete uh, even distribution of probabilities it's basically a ratio of good versus all. So in our case, what, what, what we are saying, what is good? Good is the position when two rooks can capture each other, which, which means they are on the same horizontal or vertical line. Now, all events is all the different positions of two rooks, right? Now, so let's just count one and count another. Let's start from the sample space. What's the um, uh, the, the whole set of elementary events, the whole set of positions of two rooks on, on the board. Well, for the first rook, let's say the first is white, doesn't really matter. We have 64 different positions. And for the second, we have all the other positions. There are 63 left. So this is number of elementary events in our random experiment. Now, which one of these are good? Well, let's just think about it. Whenever my white rook is in any of the points, any of the squares on 8x8 um, board, you have, let me just draw it. So this is the point where my rook is. Now, all these, all these, all these, and all these, are good places to put another rook so they are in the same horizontal or vertical uh, space right now if the whole board is eight by eight it means there are seven here and seven squares here all together i have 14 different positions of the other rook to be on so they can capture each other so for each of these, and there are 64 of them, there are 14 candidates for the position of the second rook. So what I'm saying is that uh, my probability in this particular case should be equal to the number of uh, positions which we consider to be our good positions, which we would like to count as candidates for our event. So that number of elementary events constitute the event which we are looking for, event when two rooks can capture each other. And we have to divide it by the total number of um, elementary events. And again, we are talking about random, which means in this case even distribution of probabilities. That's why we just count the number of these events, because each one of these events has the same probability. So the ratio is obviously 1463rd, which is 2 ninths. So that's the answer. With the probability of 2 ninths, which is not a small probability, if I just drop two, ro two, two rooks on, um, on the board, the probability 2 ninths that they will be able to capture each other. They will be on the same horizontal or vertical line. Now, again, I would like to emphasize the classic approach here. Total number of events in the denominator and 
the number of good events in the numerator of the ratio. That's what gives you the probability in case the probability is evenly distributed among all the elementary events, which we have actually uh, said from the very beginning. Number two. We have 26 letters of English alphabet. from A to Z. Now, let's consider that I randomly put all these 26 letters into a sequence. One letter, another, the third one, etc. Randomly. Again, ra again, randomly means that any particular position of these 26 letters in one line has exactly the same probability as any other. So let's just start from the, from the very beginning, how many different elementary events we have. That's how many permutations we have from 26 uh, letters, which is 26 factorial, right? So that's the number of permutations. Now, fine, that's okay. Um, let's go further. Um, now, we are talking about um, number of only those um, positions of these 26 letters when letter A precedes letter Z, not necessarily adjacent. Somewhere uh, is letter A, but Z should be to the right of this letter. Okay? So, um, in this particular case, let me just make this test a little bit easier. We really don't care about all other letters, B, C, D, etc. We care only about two letters, A and Z, which means we can just forget about 26 different uh, letters. We can just concentrate on these two. However, we would like to say that these two are supposed to be positioned among 26 different places, right? So let's forget about what we had, um, uh, that we have some other letters. We completely disregard them for this particular problem. So let's just concentrate on these two. So we have 26 positions, um, and two letters, A and Z, can actually be in, in any uh, positions uh, among these 26. Now, so how many uh, different um, positions of two letters can be if you have um, uh, 26 places and only two letters. Well, obviously uh, this is the number of um, combinations. Um, we have 26 places where letter A can be positioned, right? And uh, Z should be positioned on any other and the others are 25. So this is number of different elementary events. And so we, instead of this, we have reduced the number of elementary events to this number, and obviously the probability of each of them is 1 over 26, 25, 26 times 25. All right, so these are the number of elementary events which we actually care about. Now, the number of good elementary events are those when A precedes Z. Now, let's count them. So, we have counted how many elementary events we have all together. Any position of A and any position of Z. Um, by the way, if you start from Z, it will be exactly the same. Any position of Z and then the A will be uh, on, on any of these positions. So, it doesn't really matter how, to, how you start. Now, how many positions satisfy our condition that A is preceding B, uh, Z? Sorry. Well, for A, we have 25 different places, right? Number 1, number 2, number 3, etc. These are places. A can be here, can be here, 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 and here. A cannot be on position 26 because there is nothing to the right of it and Z has no place, right? So for A, you have only these positions from 1 to 25. Now, if A is positioned here, 
how many different positions for the z are. This, 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 and this. So 26 minus 1, which is 25 positions. If a is here, z is supposed to be to the right of it. And there are only 24 now, different variations, right? Now a can be here, in which case I have 23, etc. And if a is here, I have one position for the z, which is to number 26. Some of these is actually the number of elementary events which satisfy our condition of a preceding um, z. Okay, what's this sum? Well, this sum is equal to, you know what it is, right? Uh, the arithmetic progression, if you don't remember the formula, you have to write it in uh, opposite order and sum together. Uh, this is 25, sorry. So you have 26, 26, 26 in each pair, right? So you have 25 times 26. But this is 2s, so you have to divide it by 2. So that's the answer, right? So my answer, number of positions which, uh, number of elementary events, if you wish, which satisfy our criteria is this. And this is the total number of elementary events of all the different positions of the letters A and Z among 26 places. So we have to divide this by this, and obviously as a result you have one half. Now, uh, why did I actually go through all these troubles? Let's just think about it differently. A and Z can be, positions, can, can be positioned either A precedes Z, or we can always change them and z would precede a. So the number of elementary events when a precedes z is exactly the same as number of events when z precedes a, right? Because for each of these, there is each of those. Which means that the total uh, probability 1 should be evenly divided between a precedes z and z precedes a. So that's why we have one half, which we can actually uh, come up with just through this logical explanation. Um, but again, I wanted to solve this problem uh, through um, some kind of classical approach. Number of uh, elementary events and number of elementary events which satisfy our condition. And take the ratio, just as an illustration. All right, next problem. Okay, next problem is you take only 16 cards out of a standard deck. You take four jacks, four queens, four kings, and four aces. Okay? Reduced deck, if you wish. Now, we can actually put these um, cards in any order. What I'm interested in, I'm interested in the probability of randomly putting them uh, in, in, in the order which is four jacks, then followed by four queens, followed by four kings, followed by four aces. Which means they will be in the rank order. And I don't care about suits. I mean, hearts, uh, spades, doesn't really matter. As long as I have four different jacks, followed by four different queens, followed by four different kings and four, four different aces, that's okay with me. And question is, if I randomly have these 16 cards and put it in, 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 in a line, one after another, What's the probability of getting this particular order? That they will be in a rank order, in an increasing rank order. Okay, let's just think about it. Again, we have to consider 
the sample space which contains all the different elementary events, which are obviously 16 factorial, number of all the permutations of these 16 cards. Now let's think about which of these permutations are good for us. Well, let's just think about it. I have four jacks in the very beginning, but they can be in any order. So it's not just one particular order. It's actually a four factorial. All the different permutations of these four uh, different jacks is good for me. Now, with each of these, I can have four different permutations of queens, and with each of them, four different permutations of king, and four different permutations of um, ace. So that's my answer, because this is the number of good combinations when the order is preserved. And this is the total number of all the combinations. And if I will divide one by another, I will get the probability. So it's 4 factorial to the power of 4 divided by 16 factorial, which actually I have approximately 1 over 63 no it's not approximately it's exactly more than 63 million so 1 over 63 million is the probability of this type of a uh, random uh, position of my 16 cards okay and last one is an example of continuous distribution. So before we were dealing with uh, discrete distributions and uh, we were basically counting elementary events. Good elementary events which are supposed to uh, be combined together into event we are interested in the probability of and the total number of elementary events. And since we are talking about even distribution of probabilities the word random was used without any specification of how random, which means it's even, it's assumed it's even. Now we are talking about continuous distribution. And this is a very simple example, but I think it's very educational. Let's consider you have a circle uh, of a diameter r, and you inscribed a square with diagonal r, uh, r, right. So, my question is, if you take a point and randomly throw it inside this particular circle, what's the probability of this point to be inside the square? So, as I was saying before, if you have something like a continuous probability, you really have to use some kind of a nat na natural measure of the events. Now, in this case, measure is actually area. So if I'm talking about randomly throwing a point inside the circle, it means that the probability for this point to be inside any kind of a figure is proportional to its area. So the area of the whole circle if you have a diameter r, uh, r is what? Uh, pi and radius is r divided by 2, so it's pi r divided, pi r squared divided by 4. That's the area of the entire circle. Now, what's the area of, uh, of this square? Well, if diagonal is r, then the side is r divided by square root of 2, and uh, I have to square it. To get the area right so this is the area of a square and this is the area of a circle and I have to divide one by another to get the probability so it would be r square divided by uh, 2 square root of 2 square divided by pi r square 4 obviously this is reduced this is 2 is equal to 2 over pi so this is the probability. Pi is like 3 and 14, so it's about, what, 0 0.7 something, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, it's less than, less than 2 thirds. Okay, so it's about 2 uh, 0 0.6 uh, 
the probability to get inside the square if you randomly put uh, drop the point inside the circle. Randomly means evenly proportionally to the area. Okay, that was my last problem. Again, all these problems are easy. I do recommend you to go to unizor.com and review them again. Uh, just solve yourself without looking at the notes and then check against the notes. And all of these problems are about the same thing. It's a classical uh, definition of the probability as a measure. Measure of good versus all. Ver measure of whatever we are interested uh, uh, versus whatever exists, basically. And uh, in case of discrete events, we usually just count all the elementary events which constitute our event we are interested in and divided by the total number of elementary events because the measure is distributed evenly. In case of continuous distribution like this, we have to think about natural measure of um, the, the, the subject of our distribution. In this case, if I'm talking about a point which is dropped inside the circle randomly, it means that the distribution is proportional to the area. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.